Welcome back, fellow Rasa standards. This is Flo once again, here to drop another topic that, of course, I find interesting and I hope all of you will after watching this video. As you all know, I am a history person, history buff, history major. That is what I majored in college. So, of course, <clears throat> it has to do with history. This one in particular, though, is really, really uh, interesting to me because we know about the Underground Railroad to the north, right, to the free states. But not a lot of us know about the Underground Railroad to Mexico, right? Um, so today you're going to find out about what that is exactly and how, how it took place. And, and let's get to it. So uh, before we even get in, into any of that, we do have to remember that Mexico actually outlawed slavery prior to the United States. 1829 by the... Uh, I think his name was uh, Vicente Guerrero, if I'm correct. Uh, Second president, elected president of Mexico, was the person who outlawed slavery in Mexico. And obviously because he was of African descent, so it made a lot of sense. And also, if you didn't know, Mexico also had slavery as well. All right, but that's a different topic. Okay, so from 1830 to about 1860, 65, we had around 3,000 to 5,000 enslaved Africans who escaped into what is now uh, Mexico. And at the time, they were coming from places like Texas, Arkansas, uh, even Mississippi, Louisiana, and even uh, uh, what is now Oklahoma as well, all right? So they found their way to Mexico because obviously it was a lot closer to go into Mexico than to go up north because some people were being, you know, were being told to go to the north, but why would they go to the north if Mexico was right next door to them, right? All right. Even though uh, this Underground Railroad was not as complex as the ones of the north it still existed right but most of these people who did take this trip to mexico usually you know went in horse right obviously that trip was long uh, if you visited texas in the past if you've ever been to texas there's lots of parts of texas that are pretty much a whole lot of nothing right there's no trees it's just basically just land grassland right so they had to go through that another way folks would go into this underground railroad was through ferries, right, that, that uh, people had connections to, and also through, uh, through the ports, right, because Mexico was trading with the United States, so these enslaved Africans would jump into these ports, into these ships, Mexican ships, and then they would sail right into Mexico, and it was another way that, uh, that it was done, right? And another thing to, to, to uh, think about, too, is that Mexicans were very welcoming of these enslaved Africans. You might think, well, why? I mean, why would they welcome these, these people? One, again, Mex uh, Mexico had outlawed slavery in 1829, but officially in 1837, it made it basically made it a rule, right? And in Texas, in particular, Texas was part of the Mexico at one point. So you already had this conflict between Tejanos and, and Texians or Anglo-Texans, Anglo as, as they call themselves, uh, that had happened before this. So Mexicans... Uh, Tejanos in particular had a lot of uh, resentment towards these Anglo Texians, right? And also, again, since slavery had been outlawed in Mexico, Mexicans felt the need that, okay, you know, if someone's coming over, then well, we're going to help them out. So they were very welcoming of these people. And of course, the other part is that a lot of Mexicans, really a lot, mainly all Mexicans, have some African ancestry to some extent, even though it's not as visible as it is here in the United States or other parts of Latin America, they still have it, right? So that was that was probably another reason why they were so welcoming of these people, right? Um, and sometimes these slave catchers would actually go into Mexico and try to take back the runaway slaves, but no, the, the Mexican citizens who or people who live near the border would actually fight them off physically. They would not allow them to take them away. Uh, some cases, even Mexican peons, right? Uh, uh, peons, sorry. I always get that whole wrong. Uh, they they um, would um, marry African slaves, right? So that was sometimes something that would happen. And you would have, obviously, offspring from, from um, those two groups. And that is something else that I'm going to talk about in a second. Okay? And you have to also remember that Texas went, it was a slave state for a very long time, but up until 1865. Uh, and for a while, the, the, the Texans, Texan government 
outlawed. Any kind of communication between Mexicans, Tejanos, right, Mexican Americans as, as well, who lived in in uh, Texas, they uh, did not uh, allow them to to converse with these uh, African slaves. Obviously, because they understood that if they did that, then they were going to basically uh, continue to to free them, right? So I understand why why they were doing that. But again, this is something that's not very well known in the United States and in Mexico. Two countries that had a lot of connections, you know, that go way back. In particular, these two communities, and because of this, because we had so many, so many runaway slaves going to uh, places like Coahuila, Mexico, you have a community uh, known as the Mas- Mascogo community that still exists to this day, who still practice traditions from these runaway slaves, right? And that's really cool because a lot of folks, even in the U.S. Do not practice these traditions. So the fact that these runaway slaves were able to keep these traditions that they had for 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 so many years, and at the same time, still dress in in the old-fashioned ways that they used to dress. Obviously, not not all the time, but you know when they have some kind of festival or something, that's what they do. So if you go to these areas, right, you can still see the African presence in these communities. Right again. I'm going to provide the links. There's a book as well if you'd like to read the book that goes into this whole detail and more to, to a deeper extent. So I, I highly encourage you to read this. And I, I really wanted to do this video because I know there's a lot of tension between the black and brown community and on both sides. You know, you have the the uh, street vendors being attacked by, by, um, by black folks, right? And then you have, obviously, a lot of anti-black sentiment from the Mexican community. So I really wanted to, again, make this video just to show that we've had unity uh, for, for a long time. And, you know, it's, it's, it's important to, to know that because uh, both of our communities have been marginalized, you know, historically, obviously. And both of our communities suffer from a lot of the same things. So I really wanted to make this video to speak on that. And again, I will provide the links in the video description. Uh, once again, please follow me on IG. If you have not, if you have not followed me on IG, uh, Twitter, uh, TikTok, basically any social media if you want to. And wait for the next video. If you want to join the lives on IG, go ahead and do that. I open them up to the community. So on that note, this is Flo. Raza Stan. Take a stand to understand. Peace out. Snitch at the record strike, no longer separated Physically or mentally, inside a guarantee Now what they wanna see Untold stories Been said Untold stories Not dead Untold stories Live through Untold stories It's you Untold stories Been said Untold stories Not dead